Okay, so before I close with this, I just want to uh, insert this uh, before I close with a short uh, little commentary. You wouldn't believe how tough this is. Like, don't underestimate evergreen plastic with the solvent plastruct. This, like, you can reef on this. And even if you do break a joint, you can re-glue it, no problem. This is incredibly resilient. Like, that's the beauty of evergreen. That's why I build with it. You know, people wonder, why. Well, why does he always build everything out of plastic? Because it's made for this. It's made, you know, like if you bump your hand against it, you know, th right? And it's scale. Now, you can choose to build this out of 30 thou. I used 40 thou for this, which is a little bit heavy for HO, probably more appropriate for O, but that's okay. You know, once it's, there's tarps on here and debris and stuff around, you know, it's the impression that matters the most. And, like the height and the width is eight feet in HO. I just think that the pipe is maybe just a tad bit larger, but 30 thou would be the way to go, but it's more fiddly though too, so which is what I'll use on the barge slip anyway. But for now, this is a really good uh, dimension to, for demonstration purposes. So once I build this up, like what I did last night was I added on these little strips here, which is actually, again, a little bit larger in dimension, but looks pretty good. HO scale two by three for the barbed wire posts. Now, they're not three inches wide, I doubt. But they might be two, like the webbing of the post. So I mean, they, you know, I mean, it's appropriate. And you can see I just glued them on here on the top of the post later. And then what I'll do is, is I'll just take, like, I'll leave the end one straight, like a post. But these will get a bend in them, and this stuff bends really easy. But what I'll do first is, is like, this is about 10 millimeters. So I'll just run this 332nd tube over top and just snip use it as a gauge to get the right height or length of these i cut them a little bit larger right or longer when i install so i don't have to fiddle around with tiny lines and getting because th uh, you'll never get them perfectly uh, lengthwise if you cut them all exact length right so you cut them a little bit longer like i've shown before and then you just use a little tube that the correct length that you want like some of them are already 10 well you can see so i just go along and i slide this tube over in the same way that i do the fence posts which you'll see and then nip them off and then i end up with nice even length barbed wire posts right and then what i'm going to do is, is i'm just going to bend them you know with my thumb a little bit like that and they're already marked off with a pencil where the three lines are going to go and then i'm going to just use some of this thread this really small diameter quilting thread I'm just going to CA that on for the barb wire. Because in photos you can't see any barb. There's no point in putting barbs in HO scale. It's questionable for O, but it, that's up to you. Uh, but I'm just going to use this really fine thread, which will work. And uh, no point in doing barbs unless you're in 135th scale. Eh? So, really, what? but, you know, each to his own. Okay? <music>
Okay, so here's the fence painted flat black. I'd say that looks pretty good for a scratch belt, just from 40 thou uh, dowel with uh, some 2 by 3 HL strips bent over and some cotton thread, wouldn't you? All right, just laid up on the bench like that, you know, take your time and, uh, you know, it's tough to pull this kind of thing off if you don't have an airbrush in terms of spraying it though, like the, the tool. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hit this with some lighter coats now. And rather than use like aluminum, like I know some poles and fences have an aluminum look, but oftentimes we don't think of the proper ratio of scale how we view things. Like, it, like I'll show you a photo, it doesn't look aluminum at all. You see, in fact, it looks like a light gray, almost a blue hue to it because of atmospheric and distance and so on. And just because it's HO scale doesn't mean when you go up really close like this that it becomes silver and when you come back it becomes gray. It's a forced perspective. HO is, is, is a scale, is a 187 scale, regardless of one-to-one -one physics. So that's the key with color, right? We don't realize that. We paint everything prototypically the right color, but we forget all about scale. If that's what you want to do, that's great, but the reason why I don't do that is because of the illusion that it creates when you look at the overall scene. It makes sense in terms of how you would view it in the one-to-one -one world. Okay, so here's a very light blue-gray. It's actually just white with some blue in it. And because there's a lot of black, or the base coat is black, I'm going to do very, it's very thin and very light coat. So I'm not spraying to cover the black completely, just a light dusting. And I'm going to spray from the top of the fence down, like the light, the sunlight from above hitting it, because I want the shadow to be feathered out on the bottom edges of things. Okay? Remember, don't try to cover it in one pass. Do thin layers, work your way down, and then go back for another pass. Just let it catch the high points. And then notice on, on the bottom side of the fence here, see the shadow? Now watch what happens when I tilt it up. See the top, the gray? And then the shadow underneath, see? The black, the original black, see? So it's there, right? It's subtle enough, but it's there. When you move around from different angles, it all comes into play. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this uh, linoleum deck brown, right? It's not called rust, okay? It's XF79, but it's a really nice rust color. All right, I really like it for a basis of rust. Another excellent tone, in my opinion, for rust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very tiny amount and just catch the top three lengths of the... just a little bit here and there on the barbed wire, okay? Just a hint sort of visually that that's what it is, okay?
Okay, so now I'm going to paint this blue tarpaulin. They're pieces that go over the fence. And I'm going to use XF14 Sky Blue here. Once again, thin down as I usually do. And then I'm just going to spray it on. This is very thin craft paper. It's called, uh, there's different names for crepe paper. So I just want to... Okay, and I wanted some fade. Because it's out in the sun and it's blue fades really fast in the sun. So I just clamp it with a couple of clamps, stretch it out. Okay. Okay, so these little squares are one by one inch. Well, just just under one inch, but they're one inch wide. So I just measure these. Use a very sharp knife to cut this paper. It'll be okay. Uh, again, the beauty of an airbrush, right? You can paint anything, any color you want. That's the power of an airbrush. There's no fixed can colors. You just, whatever color you mix and use. Right? So you can create a color that nobody else has or people that are a slave to, uh, or choose to be a slave to rattle cans um, won't be able to do this kind of thing with their own custom color unless they have an airbrush. And of course acrylic is isopropyl alcohol based. This with to me and it doesn't stick when you spray it. Okay and then these go on like this with a little bit of matte medium because matte medium dries flat clear. So you won't have any glue blotches on your nice chain link fence. Okay, so now I'm going to attach these little blue tarps to the chain link. And you notice they're a little bit smaller so you can see the detail of the pole and the chain link, like the prototype, okay? So I just grab it with a pair of tweezers like this. I take some Liquitex Matte Medium. And you all know that this is what I like to use for all my scenery and glue as well. I mean, I use other glues, but Matte Medium is essentially an adhesive, right? It's a flat, clear, high-quality adhesive okay and it's water based and it doesn't have a high shrink rate like regular glue does and even if this goes into the chain link a bit which you won't see anyway because it's facing the building it dries flat clear you can't like it doesn't leave any sheen or globby kind of glue look right so I just lay it on like this and then and once again it's acrylic so it, it sets up pretty quick but not so quick that you can't move it around a bit and if you get any little tiny micro wrinkles good that's the way tarps look right they're not going to be exactly even but there is a distinct panel on this fence and, and uh, it's um, like I don't want to cover up. You see the top of the chain link thing? Just like the real deal, right? The pointy sharpie on the top, see? Now imagine this in O scale, geez, you know, and several panels and so on. Okay. Okay, so just to close up the uh, construction of the chain link fence tutorial, you can see here that the crepe, the painted airbrushed crepe paper is applied with matte medium. And also another beautiful thing about this is, is it's crepe paper is very nice because you can actually simulate uh, wind damage and so on. And it, it creases very scale, like you can just pick it because the matte medium is sort of rubbery. Like you can actually pick away at it. It's not brittle, right? And you can pull some of that away, see, like that, and then press down, and it looks 
very scale. Okay, you can see that I left most of the panels pretty good condition, and there's a few, uh, like a little bit here, and then down the end a little bit of wind damage here. So I'm pretty happy overall with the way it turned out. And here's the other side, so you can see. See, there's the chain link. Okay. So you know it uh, worked out really good. It's a, uh, you know, like materials-wise, it was very cheap uh, to build this, and I think it looks better than any photo etched. Uh, chain link in my experience and opinion anyway so because I have some photo etched uh, chain link and you know it looks good it has its place but you know it's uh, it doesn't have the nice poles the 3d dimensional look to it uh, you can change up the style of this fencing you know it's um, just a matter of taking your time and you have yourself a nice looking chain link fence eh? okay so it should look pretty good in front of accident steel Cheers.